we always think that observation seems to be simple because we do it every day. But in fact, doing behavior observation in a scientific context can be really challenging. What you will learn is why scientific observation is important at all, the technical challenges and requirements, and the advantages of a professional research tool, and last not least, the possibilities, how to discover the invisible in your research data. Let me give a few words about myself. My name is Pascal Mangold. I'm the founder and CEO of Mangold International. I'm acting as an international speaker, book author, researcher, and last not least, the director of the Mangold Global Research and Development Center. What do we do in our company? The company was founded more than 30 years ago and it's active worldwide. We have also partners around the world and for what we do, we received multiple awards. And what we do is we create software and hardware for observational research labs. If you have an interaction lab like this, for example, where you want to observe mother and child interactions, or a group session lab where you want to work with adults or you do some kind of eye tracking, then you always need an observation room. Here in the observation room, you need equipment that allows you to record all the cameras and all the microphones that are in this room to be able to do good observational studies. And this requires also a lot of specialized software for audio and video management and also for data collection and data analysis. What does the research center do? And the mission is advancing behavior research. And that's why we focus on creating tools and methods and algorithms for advanced data collection and data analysis in collaboration with global partners. We also provide certified trainings and we have a very special award, the Medal of Honor for Exceptional Support of Advancing Behavior Research. As for example, in this picture, this professor Mechel Papuschek, she has really a lot of publications as a very famous person. Now let me start with why do we want to observe anything at all? Because we are in research, we need to create results from data. And how do we collect the data? We can ask something, we can work with questionnaires, interviews, surveys, we can measure, maybe we measure physiology or do some kind of online monitoring. And what we cannot ask or measure, we need to investigate through other methods, for example, through document research. But obviously there are lots of things that cannot be discovered through those three data collection methods. And that requires that we observe something, especially in psychology, where is a lot of research done with children. You cannot ask questionnaires or you cannot measure something uh, very small children. So you need to observe what they're doing. Is observation easy? Let me give you a short example here. Please watch carefully what you can observe. Take a look. This afternoon was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the master bedroom. I was buttering his lordship's scones below stairs, sir. I, I was planting my petunias in the potting shed. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. But, but how did you know? Madam, as any horticulturist will tell you, one does not plant petunias until May is out. Take her away. It's just a matter of observation. The real question is how observant were you? Uh, action. Clearly, somebody in this room murdered Lord Smythe, who, at precisely 3.34 this afternoon, was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the master bedroom. I was buttering his lordship's scones below stairs, sir. But I was planting my petunias in the potting shed. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. So this is really interesting because I have never met 
anyone who saw more than one or two changes in that scenario. But as you can see here, there are so many things happening. The images are changed. People have different things in their hands. Even that person on the ground is now someone completely different. It's easy to miss something if you're not looking for it, because this is how human cognition works. There are thousands of things happening around us every day that we cannot see or we do not see because our cognition system is uh, ha having a certain kind of blindness for a lot of things that are currently not of interest to us. The main conclusion here is that scientific observation requires being able to see every detail. And being able to see every detail means that you need to be able to pause or slow down the reality and rewind the reality and watch it a number of times to really understand what's happening in that scenario. And it also requires that we can prove and we have a certain amount of quality control because we are in science. This means we need to be able to replicate our results. And this leads to the necessity of audio and video recordings. So audio and video is really essential in behavior observation. Let me give you a few words about the technical requirements. Now that we know that we need to record something, the question is, how do we record? If you ever try to record a scenario with more than just your, um, your cell phone, then you quickly figure out that you run into a lot of issues because you need to make your thoughts about the number of video cameras, the type of video cameras, how many audio signals you want to have, how do you cable everything, how do you mix those signals, how do you set up power supply if you, for example, go to a school or a, a kindergarten environment and you want to make recordings on site, then there are lots of uh, questions and there are thousand possibilities to waste your time. The, the biggest issue often that we found out during the last 30 years is audio. And audio requires always an individual lab planning because if you want to, for example, observe, as I said, a classroom, then you want to have multiple cameras and you want to have also multiple microphones. And the question is, how do you mix all those signals together? so that it really makes sense at the end. And the biggest issue for everyone having more than one camera is how to synchronize the recording of multiple audio, video, and data feeds. Also, if you're in a psychology lab and you want to synchronize, for example, a physiology measurement device with your participants and the video recording, then you will quickly find out that this is very, very complicated. So for recording, you need a highly specialized recording software. The good news is there is a solution. First of all, the software is made for recording multiple video and audio sources in sync. That requires that all the data sources are really frame accurately in sync. And this is a real challenge. Also, that Video Sync Pro software is compatible with num numerous camera models, uh, with Windows devices, and also with network streams. It allows to easy review the video by using the time sliding bar here has also rights management in the system to make sure that the data protection security requirements are met and here as said before it allows to send synchronization information to other devices like for example a physiology recorder so that the physiology is recorded in sync with the videos very important is that it also allows to add markers and comments already during recording. Those markers and comments are presented on a timeline here and allow the precise control uh, of the video by, just by clicking on one of those items and the videos immediately go to that position. Those videos can also be exported based on the marker information. If I want to get a video for teaching and training that only shows all those situations that I have marked here, for example, uh, that software can do this for me and is creating an extracted video that I can use for teaching and training. The most important thing is that we can use that uh, data recorded here, the audio video, and also the log information already for further coding and analysis. This can be done in any kind of application. As I said, you can go into a school environment, 
You can use it in a simulation training for medical workers or for rescue workers. This can be done for any kind of team research or in pure psychology. The good news is that there are out of the box solutions for observational research with that software. This is what I call the tiny observation lab. It's just a laptop computer with the software on it and HD webcams and a very good microphone. And this is already a very, very good setup for uh, studies, especially if you have dyadic studies with two people. If you want to have bigger cameras with zoom lenses, then you would go for a portable system. This is just one of thousand examples. And last not least, in a fixed room setup in a university, for example, or an industrial research center, you would set up a stationary recording system like this, for example. So the summary for the technical requirements is that recording multiple video and audio feeds in sync is really technically challenging, but there are professional solutions available and also annotations can made during recording already, which is very helpful and saves you a lot of time later. It's proven technology. Now let me come to the uh, part for video coding data analysis. The major question now arises, what do we do with all the recorded videos? A lot of people think that recording a video is what they want to do, but that's not true. They do not want to record video. They want to get results. They want to get some kind of statistical analysis on what's happening in those videos. How can we do that? A very typical method is using paper and pencil. And that's the typical result of it. It is a very, very boring and time consuming job if you try to analyze audio and video with paper and pencil. Really, don't do this. Use the right tool for it. Use a professional tool that's explicitly made for video content coding and also behavior data analysis. For example, the software Interact. The idea of Interact is that you can control all the video sources in sync just with those uh, video control buttons here or the timeline. You can collect all your observations as what we call codes. And you can group your information in what we call classes. And also, the most important thing is that we can collect very, very precise time information for each of our observations. And this is then what you get here. For example, this is a chart. And also, this gives you statistics I'm going to show you later. Now, how does the analysis process go? People always say, what is this system doing for me automatically? Simple answer, you need to watch the video and collect the data because this is your job as a researcher. There is nothing automatic. It is undefined. What's the scenario in this video? How many people you have? How do they turn their heads? What do they say? Do they talk uh, at the same time, for example? Then those situations can be very, very complex and there are no automatic analysis systems that say, for example, this person is doing this and that behavior. Only you know how to interpret the video contents. And that's a major message here, but a good tool makes this process efficient and effective and also data analysis easy. First of all, you need to have a, what you call a coding system that matches your hypothesis. That's a very small coding system for teamwork, for example. This is what we call classes. So we have, for example, a class communication and in communication we have so-called codes, behavior codes, like friendly, comforting, stressing, aggressive, neutral, or none. We have a class called topic. Maybe those people that we observe are talking about an object or about a plan. If they talk about an object, it can be their imagination. If they're, for example, designers, they say, I'm thinking about that beautiful chair or car, whatever they design. And in a positive way, for example. 
Another class would be, for example, action, give, take, request, create, destroy, or engagement. So if you observe those people, they talk about the team, they do a certain action, and they talk about a certain topic. Now, as I said, this is completely depending on your hypothesis and what you are observing. If you're observing design teams, your coding system is certainly different than if you observe mothers and babies, for example. Now, the next step is that you use this coding system and you watch your videos and collect data by using Interact to make this process very uh, fast and efficient. And last but not least, and that's the fun part, you use this information that you collected here and you can get really interesting statistics and also very complex data analysis based on a very simple coding system, for example. And this is the value of Interact. First, we watch and we have our coding system here. And whenever we detect something that's of interest for us, we enter the code by clicking with the mouse or using the keyboard by using the shortcut for that code. And then Interact will collect what you call events with a very precise start and end time for that behavior. And in that way, we get this list of events with data. At the end, we get a transformation of the reality in form of data. And now we can do some kind of analysis on it. Again, the most important information here is the time because the time allows us to ask interesting research questions. I'm not in interested in if this person is talking 10 times, I'm interested in what is happening after she is saying something, for example, or before she's saying something, or when they start arguing. And that's something that I can get from this simple data. Let me give you some examples here. A very simple example in the field of user experience. In this study, we made a usability test with a coffee machine. The users, they had different tasks. For example, they should fill in water, fill the beans, and create a mid-sized coffee. We had very simple research questions. What usability issues arise? How long is the task performance duration? And what kind of comments do the users give? There's nothing more valuable than a user who is telling you immediately what is wrong with your product or what he or she loves with your product. Now, the result of the coding here is reactions and um, common explanation, complaint, and an operation problem. What we see here is the duration of the tasks. That's the water task, the bean filling, and the coffee task. And here are the comments on the timeline. For example, like, I can't find the on switch or I don't know how to open that lid or things like that. So from that, we get descriptive statistics. We get statistics on all those codes. And we know, for example, that the duration for uh, the three different tasks were like this. Uh, actually, I can immediately see that this person took almost one minute to make a coffee. So this is long because if you have this coffee machine in a bigger environment with lots of people who want to get a coffee. I mean, if 10 people want to get a coffee, you need 10 minutes for 10 coffees. So that's uh, impossible. Anyhow, this is uh, a very easy and simple example. Now, it's getting much more interesting if you have, like in the study, 32 users and we had 10 different sessions with different products. Now, the data is much more complex. Uh, the research questions were, for example, which machine has which types of usability issues? What's the issue distribution across users and machine? And what's the statistical comparison result across sessions per machine? These are much more difficult to answer questions. The good news is those questions can be answered through thorough data selection. Now, in the Interact software, we have collected all different sessions and different trials. And now you can say, for example, I want to have all users for a certain machine, or I want to have a certain issue across all machines. And then 
I get this table of descriptive statistics with just one mouse click. And as you can see here, I can get different values, for example, the frequency, the duration, or as you can see here, the percentages, latencies of certain actions and so on. Now let me go to a more complex example. And that's really the value of behavior observation. If you can ask things like that, what happened six seconds before all users had a specific issue. If we take a look at this image here, for example, maybe let's say this is an issue, the red here. And this interval here is those six seconds before. So we're interested in what is happening in all those other codes, only those six seconds before. Answering questions like this can be done by information mining. For example, here in Inject, we create events based on the existing data. And this is now where Inject is doing some automatic coding for you. It is creating more complex codes. Based on those complex codes, we can get statistics with a few mouse clicks. Let's go to a more complex example, teaching research. Let's assume in this study, we had a research question, two small student group setups create more engagement and typical class sizes, which are between 20 and 35. The issue here is we first need to define engagement. So we have already struggles with our coding system. Interact allows us to collect data, for example, in a grounded theory approach or in an explorative data collection approach. So we can collect information that we think that lead us to to a good coding system. We have collected a lot of information here about the teacher and the group. Based on that information, we can use, for example, the state space grid. That's a screenshot here from Interact. Those are different tasks. Um, there's a description task, a reference, examples, strategy task, and so on. And what are the students doing on it? They're doing research, they're explaining something. They're requesting information and they're processing, for example. Let's take a look at this circle here. From requesting information during a descriptive task, the activity of that group went to the main task and also requesting information here. There's a lot of statistics behind that that I um, cannot show at the moment. I just want to focus on those images. In that image, we can easily see that they're very focused on research, for example, and the main tasks. Whilst in the other setting, we have a lots of off-topic states here. We do not have some here. Off-topic means the students are talking about their weekends or their holidays or whatever during class. So they have a kind of chaotic change in state so it's going forward and back between the different states here um, another example is child research a research question here would be for example how often does the infant react with a positive vocalization after a co-occurring smile of mother and infant in fact it's an extremely complicated uh, question because co-occurring smile means that mother and infant they are simultaneously gazing at each other while they are smiling so there are two different things going on at the same time and this is obviously impossible to observe you can try it and i really trust that you cannot get it right because you cannot look at both people at the eyes and at their faces and their facial expressions at the same time this is uh, almost impossible, but we can calculate it from existing simple coding. And this again is the value of a tool like that, because simple coding would be, for example, we can say the infant is gazing to the mother, the mother's facial effect is smile, and the mother's vocalization is positive, and also the infant's facial effect is smile somewhere below here. Now this on my time axis here, the mom gaze, the mom smile, the infant gaze, and the infant smile. And also the infant vocalization, let's say the gray ones are negative vocalizations and the green ones are positive vocalizations. We're interested in the co-occurrent K 
gaze and smile of both. And we want to know if the child is making a positive vocalization after this all co-occurs. In Interact, I just use the co-occurrence filter. Let Interact create those items for me. And that's where we have those four items co-occurring. So we have the co-occurring gaze and smile here and also here. But we also have many other behaviors that we collected before or after. And now the amazing thing is that we can just say, let me have the statistics on only those times here where they have the co-occurring gaze and smile. So what's happening in all the other codes here? And this can be done with a simple mouse click in the Interact software. However, would you observe something like that with paper and pencil or Excel or Word or whatever, if you do not have a specialized uh, tool that, that allows you to make these combinations and filter all your data? Our question was the positive focal reaction after a co-occurrent smile. Now we need to take a look at that. We call this contingency analysis. So we are looking for the co-occurring smile, which we have here, and the positive internet vocalization, which we have here. And we search in an interval, like, for example, 20 seconds. So if the child is giving a positive vocalization within 20 seconds after, co after the co-occurring smile, we call this a contingent behavior. Again, as you see here, for example, here we do not have the contingent behavior. The next positive vocalization is out of our 20 seconds frame, but here we are inside. And this means we have a joint attention here. And we can also get statistics on that with a, a simple mouse click. Now the conclusion of that is that observing the realities is very, very complex. So first of all, you need very good video. You need different views of the same scenario. If you, for example, have two people in a room, you at least need two cameras because you want to get their facial expressions. You want to see their, their frontal bodies. And um, if you would only use one camera, for example, and one person turns away like this, you just would see the, the side of the face and not not the facial expression anymore it's also important to have very good audio quality especially in psychology uh, people are not actors so they're just mothers infants fathers grandmothers and so on and so they are not trained to speak clearly they speak slang they can also speak very fast they can speak very silent so you don't understand anything anymore so that's why you need to have a lot of good uh, microphones and you need to think about how to record all this data, as I said before. And at least you need a tool that's especially made for content coding, as I've shown you here. Don't use paper and pencil. This is definitely a waste of time. And answering interesting research questions requires more than simple data that can be uh, collected. What you need is a tool that allows you to generate complex answers from originally simple codes. I hope I could show that. My major mission is to tell people that if they collect simple data, then they are able to discover the invisible by combining that simple data with different uh, transformations and with different methods, and then things that cannot be observed because they're too complex for human perception can be unveiled uh, with a few mouse clicks. And that's the real value for me in behavior observation. It's not just looking at something and making some notes and counting how often someone is saying something. It's really that uh, going in deep into the data. Um, just a side note, Interact works on Windows and also on Mac OS. It's identical on both platforms. So all the functionalities are the same. You know, the using user behavior is the same. As I said, there are many more functionalities, but 
This requires an intensive knowledge of Intract. Otherwise, I would just show you some things and you would say, hmm, I don't understand what he's showing me. Because you need to know some more things, how your data is structured and what to get from the data. The major information here is that Intract is also connected to Python. And Python is the research language number one. And there are thousands, if not hundred thousands, of analysis modules already available. We just need to connect those analysis methods or visualization methods with Intract, and then we can use those methods from already existing Python modules. Intract is a trustworthy uh, software which is used by the world's top universities for many, many years, and also by lots of universities in China already. References are also here on our website. We have a lot of publications here. I'm opening this just in a second. If you want to cite observational research uh, or the mangled Intract software, please use that reference here. Let me just go you to the publications, uh, papers, scientific papers, and you can go into detail and take a look what people did with the Intract software. I would like to show you how that works live. I'm switching to Intract here. If I want to analyze some kind of videos, I open those videos just by double click on that. I have my videos open here. I can use my navigation bar. Let me create a new document here. I open that the document here, the state space grid. And I go to the state space grid, and I can I can see how those different people behaved, and I get statistics on that dyadic analysis. Also, very important is that we can get um, observer agreement. I can calculate the amount of observer agreement with the Cohen's kappa, for example. And here in my statistical analysis, um, a kappa of one, for example, because I have only matching behaviors. So when one observer saw that behavior, the other observer saw the exact same behavior. Let me show again what I did before. If I have that coding already, I can just click on one of those items. The number by itself. The number by itself. And the, the video will be itself. replayed over and over again. And I can make here some transcripts and record what they said, for example, during that point of time. So I always can collect the full information from what's really happening here. As uh, said, there are lots of different statistical analysis possibilities and data transformation functionalities and they help you getting the most out of your data the workflow editor allows me to just add some modules i do it randomly and just to connect those modules and to create a workflow for analysis let me use my python workflow here and now I get this Python module integrated with my Intract data here in the background. So actually, this is a box plot of frequencies of codes from those codes here in the background. Yeah, I'm ready for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mango. And uh, right now it's Q and A time. And anyone want to ask a question could raise your hand uh, in the software. Uh, so thank you for your sharing, Mr. Ongo. And uh, after sharing, I understand that your equipment will be of great help to our scientific research. Uh, but I want to know if you have the idea of making this device silly reason. Uh, for example, use a simple UI to analyze uh, 
analyze children or other people with one click, uh, then the report may be that uh, the results that public can understand. Uh, for example, your children is likely to suffer from autism. Uh, this is the end of my question. Thank you. Let me use that guy, for example. So my simple observation system would be, my class would be uh, behavior, and the child is, oops, sorry, uh, my fault here. And the code would be, for example, smile, look, ask. And then I create this coding system. I assign keys on the keyboard and I can start observation. Um, I, I had a couple of examples of, of different things. So when I and you're, click the, the goal of this and release, is basically then interact this recording to start and the end of that of, certain behavior. Uh, of, now that's the simplest way of collecting information. Uh, I hope that answers your question. So it can be very, very simple just by defining a coding system with simple keys, uh, simple codes, and then just pushing the key whenever something happens. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in this software available for online research, because during the pandemic, most of our, our experiments was conducted online. So mm -hmm. is this uh, experiments videos are qualified for for our software in interact to analyze mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because some level come they are not so clear. That's a very good question. This was throughout the last two years. We had this all over the world. People couldn't go to the lab. And so they needed to continue with their studies. So you need to make sure that you have a good video quality. And we have people that ask parents, for example, in autism research, just to videotape their children with the, with the cell phone. And if you use a cell phone video, I mean, the, the image quality is very, very good today. So you have a full HD video and that works very well but also a webcam recording can be very good because it's also full hd recording as long as you can see what you want to see it works that's the short answer how do we choose the appropriate analysis of how doing research lots of people they know about r or spss and they think i need to use r or i need to use spss that's wrong you need to use the tool that gives you the data or the results that you want to have, especially here in Interact, they have this wonderful time information in here. And if you export the data and you go to SPSS or Excel or any other kind of research software, you lose the, the context of this information as you have it here, for example. It's just as you can see, it's click, 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 click. And then you have all the data and you get the full statistics with just a few mouse clicks, and then you can export, uh, copy those results and go, for example, to Excel and paste it in Excel. And here's your research data. And this is why the short answer to your question is, if you use a tool, please make sure that you use all the functionalities of that tool before you try to use another tool. Because the problem with another tool is that it costs a lot of time to get the data from tool number one into tool number two. And that's why we focus on uh, having all the functionalities for this kind of data in Interact. So this question is about using Interact for behavior and transcript analysis. Yes, that's uh, entirely possible. As I said before, I have those codes. I can double click. There was something that I did this time. There was something that I did he, this time. There was something that I did. That's a transcript here. And the transcript is attached to that field. I can go to change my layout here and show the transcript as a column. I have the data in relation. So I have a behavior code and a transcript. I can now export this data 
uh, as all my transcripts, for example, to process in another tool or to go to Word. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mangold. Uh, I I wonder that uh, will you launch any application extensions helping researchers to analyze the data? That's a very good question. In fact, what you can see here in the workflow editor, there are already 40 built-in workflows, class report, for example. I can just run that. So you get this class report. So this is what we call built-in packages. If you want to do it yourself in Python, for example, we have the Python module in here. So you could write your own Python source and run it on the data in Intran. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mangold. Uh, thank uh -huh. you for your clear and informative talk uh, this evening for our students. I think we, we have learned a lot uh, from mm -hmm. your talk about the uh, intact.